Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. Again, I'm your host, Coach Evans, and let's start our recap of yesterday's loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, the loss puts us at 13-3. and three. Uh, We still have the number one seed, still have the bye, uh, still host, you know, as long as we're in the playoffs, still host every game up until the Super Bowl. So we still have all of our, all of our goals sitting there. I personally am not bothered by the loss. I see a lot of people on Twitter are um i'm personally not i'm disappointed in the fumbles i do understand the conditions of the field but you can't turn the ball over and expect to win the game you can't um i have not listened to the pressers yet from harbaugh or any of the other players i'm going to do that afterwards i wanted to give my opinion before i listened to what they had to say because i didn't want what they had to say to sway what I was going to say, but I normally listen to them before I do my recap. This time I just didn't. So um, let's look at the stats real quick. Then we'll get into the drive by drive and go from there. Um, team stats. We only had 13 first downs, but they only had 16. It was a real sloppy game both ways. It was sloppy both ways. Uh, they had 289 total yards. We had 224. Uh, they had 62 plays. We had 57. Um, they rushed for 155. We rushed for 106. They passed for 134, which most of that coming on the 70 yard touchdown pass. We passed for 118. Um, both teams had two turnovers. Um, time possession, they won 34, almost 35 minutes to 25 minutes. Uh, individually, Najee Harris had over 100 yards. Jalen Warren had 33 yards. Mason Rudolph had 152 and that one touchdown to Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson had four for 89. Uh, Eric Rowe, the guy who punched the ball out of Gus for the fumble, I think he had 12 tackles. Uh, TJ Watt had two more sacks before he got hurt, which led, he got, I think, 19 to lead the league so far. Offensively for the Ravens, Gus had 48 yards rushing. Snoop had 40 yards rushing. Melvin Gordon had 33. Uh, Snoop passed for 146 and a TD to Isaiah Likely. Uh, Likely had two catches for 31 yards with that touchdown. Aguilar led the team in receiving with five catches for 39. Uh, Deshaun Phillips had 13 tackles. Marcus Williams had nine. Uh, Trent Simpson had a sack. Uh, Clowney had a sack, which got his bonus. That was a $750,000 sack, which, you know, kudos to you, Clowney. And, um... That's kind of what the stats said, man. Wasn't a lot to write home about. Real, real sloppy game. Conditions were bad. It was cold. It was wet. But still no excuse. You know, you go out there and execute. And it wasn't looking like it should look um, early. But there was some some good and some bad. But, again, I'm not stressed about us losing this game. Not. Not. Just get it right. Get ready for, you know, what's to come, man. We figure out who, who we who we playing and and go from there. There was some bright spots of the game. Trent Simpson was a, was a bright spot. Um, nobody, I don't think, is super hurt. I don't think. I know some people went to the blue tent, but I'll be listening and trying to find out stuff to see how those guys are. But overall, man, we got out of there fairly healthy. And I put a little poll in the chat for the live stream. I said, one, if you want to win the game. Two, if you want to come out healthy. And I didn't see any... Number one, like the prior prioritizing. I didn't see anybody put number one in there. So for us to come out fairly healthy, most people agree with that. And I think that's what we did. But let's get into the, the drive by drive and then we can get you guys out of here for today. All right. So they got the ball first. And this is these are my notes. And um, funny thing is about technology. I was for the past three weeks, I was writing these things down, like writing these notes out, like three, four, five sheets of paper, just writing them out. And I forgot that you can dictate stuff on Word. <laughs> and I remembered this morning, so I didn't have to write it all out. So now I got everything right in front of me on the screen in Word. And I can just read it to you without writing all that paper out. <laughs> so it, it happened a lot faster this morning. But all right, here we go. First Ravens drive. Uh, it's a, a series of almost. Uh, they fumbled. They almost fumbled a couple of times, but they didn't. They got it. Should have had an interception by Marcus. A lot of slips and slides in the first drive, but it ended in a punt. Uh, I think Marcus should have had an interception, but we're going to talk about these gloves throughout this recap. 
I'm probably going to get on my soapbox and y'all probably going to tell me to shut up about these gloves. But gloves and rain don't mix to me. But we're going to digress. So Ravens get the ball in their first drive. It ends in a three and out. Snoop dropped a dime to Justice Hill on a similar play to what he scored on last game. He just, I don't know. The coverage was a little bit better, but it still landed right in his hands. I don't know if he, the rain or the defender or what, but it's a great pass. But the drive ended in a punt, three and out, first drive. So, uh, Steelers second drive. Steelers did a great job of mixing it up, mainly with the run. Uh, Najee Harris had a bunch of yards straight down the middle. A um, couple of defensive passes sprinkled in there to, to keep us honest, but it was mainly Najee Harris up the middle, and they ended up getting a touchdown on that drive to make it 7-0. The Ravens' second offensive drive ended another three and out. Snoop had great protection from the O-line, but nobody seemed to get open. Early in the drive, Charlie Kolar had a drop. And in my opinion, Darren Gloves went right through his hands. Gloves in the rain. Don't mix to me. But again, y'all may tell me to shut up, but I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> uh, punt. Another three and out. Punt. All right. Ravens third defensive drive. Ravens forced a three and out finally. Um, they went deep to Deontay Johnson on third down, but he was covered by Brandon Stevens, and we forced him to punt on there. It's still 7-0. Still is at this point. Ravens third offensive drive. The drive starts good. Two good runs by Melvin Gordon. Got a first down. Ravens first. First down on their third drive. Go right back to Melvin Gordon on third down, and the old Melvin Gordon shows up. He fumbles. He fumbles the ball. We don't see Melvin Gordon again until the beginning of the fourth quarter. This, keep in mind, this is middle of the first quarter. We don't see Melvin Gordon again until the beginning of the fourth quarter. We may not see Melvin Gordon again in, the, in, in these playoffs. Especially with the signing of Davin Cook. But they got a short feel out of it. And um, they get the ball. So still is what fourth offensive possession. Ravens D fourth possession. Uh, fourth time the Ravens defense takes the field. We get a traditional Ravens result. The Steelers get a couple of plays. But uh, out in the flats on the right. We, we gang tackle the guy. And before we can get him down. Delshawn Phillips punched the ball out. Arthur Mollett comes up with the fumble, and Ravens' defense is on its thing. Get the ball back for the offense, and now we get a short field, and let's see what we can do with this short field. Excuse me. All right, on the four, Ravens' fourth offensive possession, after getting the first down to start the drive, blown assignments by the Ravens' offensive line, and they get a clear sack. Get a clear sack through that. Uh, the guy came unblocked. The record and the other tight end blocked out. Um, the tackle who, um, I don't know if it was Macari or whoever it was, they blocked in and the guy just came straight through and got a sack on Snoop. And on third and long, Snoop was not able to pick up the first down on the scramble. Uh, nobody was open. He took off out the pocket. It was third and like 12. He was only able to get up like seven or eight. And so um, Jordan Stout was able to have to come in and punt. And at this point in the game, Jordan Stout is the MVP because he's punting the crap out of the ball. I mean, he's booming, the, booming punts. He's dropping, he's dropping dimes. They got backspin on him. Jordan Stunned, I mean, Jordan Stout <laughs> is doing his thing at, at that time. All right. Ravens' fifth defensive possession. After the punt and a penalty by the Steelers, which puts him at the 10 yard line, the Ravens force a three and out. And at this time, it's five minutes and 49 seconds left in the half. So this is the Ravens' fifth offensive drive. And they haven't done much at the time. The first two plays of this drive. Looks like a lot of the same. Looks like we're about to go three and out. But Snoop hits Laqu Laquan Trail on the third and nine. And that gets some momentum going. The very next play, Gus busts a 29-yard run that gets us uh, on our side of the field, the Ravens side of the field. Uh, the next play, TJ White gets a TFL. And you think, okay, nah, the, the drive's finna be stopped or altered. But Snoop hits Isaiah Likely for another touchdown. And likely is showing that he is a certified dog. He catches the ball, bounces off one guy, stiff on Patrick Peterson, dives into the end zone, and now we have a ball game, people. It's 7-7. Seven, 7-7 seven. Seven, seven with a little over two minutes remaining in the half. We got life. We got life. Got life. We're showing signs of a fight. Now, they get the ball back. They have a promising two-minute drive. The Steelers do. 
Are they moving the ball? They get on the other side of the field at their plus 40 or so. Uh, Clowney gets his sack that he needed to get $750,000 bonus. Congrats. Shout out to Clowney for, for doing that. I know everybody was giving him the, the money sign when he when he got his sack and he, he was doing this. So, hey, almost a million dollar sack. Shout out to you, big dog. Hey, don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> um, now, early in that drive, Kyle Van Noy almost had a sack. He reached around the defender and hit the quarterback on the shoulder, but he was able to complete the pass. And I was talking about how had he been able to get him on the bicep, it may have been a fumble or incompletion. Well, shortly after Clowney's sack, and again, they were having a good drive, Van Noy beats the same guy again, and instead of hitting him on the shoulder, he hits him on the bicep where he tried to hit him the first time, and that creates a fumble. We cover the ball pretty much. It's like two seconds left. We end the half on a kneel down and stop their good two-minute drive. So we go into the halftime, 7-7. Offensively, we end the half with the touchdown. Defensively, we end the half getting a stop. Today's recap of the Ravens-Steelers game is brought to you by a newest sponsor, 621 Gallery. I've noticed in the past couple of months that we have a few local Raven, Ravens fans here in Tallahassee, one of which is the owner of 621 Gallery. He said he wanted to help the channel because he liked what we was doing. Well, this sponsorship is a result of that conversation. 621 Gallery is the oldest contemporary art gallery in Tallahassee. It's located right between FAMU and Florida State. If you don't know, both schools are within walking distance from each other. You can pretty much walk from one campus to the other. 621 is part of the Railroad Square Arts District. They provide an environment for community and art to come together and be a part of something larger than themselves. They start each month with First Friday, a gallery hop that started in the early 2000s. Throughout the month, they have an array of programs and events ranging from art auctions to concerts to fashion shows. Thank you to the leadership at 621 Gallery for sponsoring this video, and you can find them at 650-3 Railroad Square if you're in Tallahassee or online at 621 Gallery on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you, 621 Gallery, for sponsoring this video. Now, coming out the second half, it's 7-7. Seven, seven. We got a ball, good ball game. We had a good offensive drive to, to end the half. We're going to keep this thing rolling. No. <laughs> the Ravens go three and out to start to open the uh, second half. TJ, Watts get, TJ Watt gets a sack on second down. Then on third and long, Laquan Trailwell drops a pass that may or may not have been a first down, but it went right through his hands with, guess what? Gloves on in the rain. The ball hit him right there, but scooted right through. Hello. But maybe just me being old and being asinine about gloves in the rain. Y'all can tell me to shut up in the comment section if you want to. You can. I ain't going to trip about it. I know I'm keep harping on the same thing. <laughs> but it is what it is. All right. Seven position. Seven position. Make sure I'm in the right spot. Yes. Seventh defensive possession for us, which would be the seventh Steelers offense possession. Um, they say the Ravens' next defensive series is marred by a bunch of Steelers' mistakes, and it ends in a bobble snap on third and 15 by the Steelers. The Ravens do their job, but the Steelers make it easy by a bunch of uh, shooting themselves in the foot, and it's about 10 minutes and 30 seconds left when the Steelers punt the ball back to the Ravens. Now, Ravens get the ball back, which will be their eighth possession. There was a nice mix of, make sure I'm right. All right, here we go. Another three and out by the Ravens ends on a TJ Watt sack on third and down, and it's still 77. It brings TJ Watt to have a league leading 19 sacks. 19. So he got a second and sixth possession, a second and seventh possession, and now he leads the league with 19 sacks. That would be T.J. Watt. And all this happened before he got hurt. Remember, he got hurt, I think, early in the fourth quarter or late in the third. All right. Now, now we're on the eighth possession. The Steelers' eighth possession opened up with a drive to a 10-yard run by Najee Harris, but then two straight negative plays, one being a TFL by Dale Sean Phillips where he ran Najee Harris out of bounds. And then the next one is Trenton Simpson's first sack. Similar to the, a sack that the Steelers got early in this game, the Steelers' O-line 
the tackle blocked out, the guard blocked down. Trent Simpson came from depth between both of those guys, and because he's so fast, the guard had no chance to step right, step left, and then come back right to Simpson. By the time he saw Simpson and tried to step, Simpson had shot past him and was on the quarterback's head. So Trent Simpson got his first sack, which and he plays with a lot of energy. I will say that that cat plays with a lot of energy, even on special teams that he was out there. His his energy is, is high. He's a high energy guy, and sometimes you know. All positive. I ain't speaking on nothing, nothing negative on Simpson today because all I saw was the game tape. Haven't seen no all 22 or nothing, so we ain't even going there. Just a great job by Simpson of, of taking advantage of the opportunity that he was presented yesterday. Got his first sack. Shout out to you, Simpson. All right. So, Ravens get the ball back after that. Uh, it was a nice mix of run and pass on the next drive to start. But we got around midfield, and it seemed to be some kind of confusion by Snoop, uh, some indecisiveness. There was some errant throws. I don't know if guys were not open down the field, but he seemed to be holding the ball a little longer. And when he decided to turn it loose, it was not accurate, and we ended up punting the ball again. So now we're on the ninth possession by both teams. Uh, the Steelers force, I'm sorry, the Ravens forced the Steelers into a third and four, but the Steelers run a slant on the side of Rocky Sin. Uh, Rocky Sin lets the guy get inside. Marcus Williams is, I ain't gonna say out of position, but he takes a step up on a underneath route and is not over the top of the slant. So it's a combination of Rock not being, I'm sorry, of Marcus not being deep enough and Rock is seeing giving up the inside too fast and they give up a 71 yard touchdown to Deontay Johnson. That's, yeah, 71 yard touchdown to Deontay Johnson and it's now 14 to 7 Steelers. Now, we're in the fourth quarter now. We finally see Melvin Gordon again, the first time since the fumble back in the first quarter. Um, it's on, on third and six, we hit Nelson Aguilar for a first down, which is good because we hadn't been completing passes lately. So now we get to another third and six. Snoop hit Nelson Aguilar again for a first down. So that's two straight third and sixes where he finds Nelson Aguilar for first downs. We the third set of drive, third set of series on that drive, we get a third and eight, and Snoop can't complete it to. Justice Hill on a little check down. And it probably wouldn't have gotten the first down anyway. Matter of fact, it wasn't Chelsea. It was Tylen Wallace. It was Tylen Wallace. He skipped it to him. Had Nelson Aguilar going across the middle. They jumped it. Then he tried to come off of there to Tylen Wallace. And he ended up skipping it to him. So, I don't know if the weather was affecting it. I don't know if the pressure was affecting it. But the ball came nowhere close to Tylen Wallace on that. So, it's affected by something. Weather, his arm, decision making. Something happened position the Ravens force a three and out and Trent Simpson has a huge stop on Najee Harris in the open field they have they run a third it's third and five and they throw a little check down to Najee Harris in the flats and it's one-on-one -on -one Trent Simpson and Najee Harris and Trent Simpson makes a great tackle initially initially he big bumps him but as he slides down he grabs those ankles and Najee falls and it's three and out and the Steelers are forced forced to punt now it's late in the fourth quarter it's it's do or die time. Gus Edwards fumbles on this drive. Uh, enough said for that. They, the Steelers get the ball back. Short field. Think with about maybe five-ish minutes or so left. The Steelers give us a heavy dose of Najee Harris. And if I'm not mistaken, Najee Harris touches the ball on every play of this drive except for the last play. I mean, they, they run it down. They get it all the way down the field because they already start with a short field. So now it's like third and three from the three. They line Najee offset. They bring the other back in motion. And they try to run a jet sweep to him on third and three from the three. But Trent Simpson <clears throat> stops it. And now they're forced to kick the field goal. And so now it's 17 to seven with about three minutes left in the game. So now this is our 11th possession. We're now down 10 points with no timeouts. Zero timeouts left, down 10 points. So, this is how that drive goes. Snoop completes the first three passes to start the drive. Uh, he picks up a fourth and one on a QB draw to keep the drive going. And Snoop was doing a good job of working a two-minute drill. But the downside of that is he was taking too long to make decisions. Now, even though we were moving the ball down the field, he was taking too long to either decide to throw it or run it or throw it away. Because without having timeouts, timeouts, each second was crucial and 
He just wasn't processing it fast enough to what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna do? Like he he would get good blocking, but he just sit there and try to figure out what he's gonna do with the ball. And and guys probably were not open, but either gonna run or gonna throw it away because you need that time for the next play. And the time was just really getting away from us because we need two scores regardless. We either need touchdown, onside kick, field goal, or field goal, onside kick, touchdown. And losing that time was was really crucial, really crucial. So we eventually get stopped on fourth down, uh, I mean on third down, Snoop gets sacked. We run Justin Tuck out there. We kick the field goal with 16 seconds left. Um, so it makes it 17 to 10. Steelers, uh, they get the onside kick, they take a knee, they win the game. Um, again, all our goals are still in front of us. We lose this game, real sloppy game. Conditions were sloppy. I'm not tripping about it. You know, there was some good, there was some bad. I don't like the fumbles, but I, you know, you just can't turn the ball over and win. And they had two turnovers too, but still, I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping. Tell me how you guys feel about it in the comment section. And I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And again, shout out to 621 Gallery for sponsoring this video. And I'll see y'all soon, man. Enjoy the football today. Peace and love.